Hi, and welcome back. In this quick start lesson, you'll learn how to switch songs in a music app using the range trigger in ProtoPy. Modern music apps allow users to switch songs easily by swiping left and right. As users swipe to the next song, the title of the song updates, making it convenient for users to navigate their playlists. With ProtoPy's range trigger, you can do the same thing. Let's get to it. Open our Pi in Studio. At the property panel, all the song cover photos are grouped into what's called a paging container. We have another lesson covering the paging container in detail. Check it out. Let's start with a quick preview. Because of the paging container, we can switch between songs with a simple swipe interaction. We're going to take things up a notch by making it so that when you switch songs, not only does the next song play automatically, but the song description changes as well. And the magic happens when you change the scroll distance of the paging container that holds the song cover pictures. That triggers the other song and updates the description too. Curious how this is possible? ProtoPie has an array of conditional triggers that enable one layer property to control the other layers. These are called conditional triggers. In a previous lesson, we discussed how conditions set up the parameters that must be met for the response to take effect. Now let's talk about conditional triggers. These special triggers have built-in conditional logic, allowing them to trigger interactions once when specific requirements are met without using a conditional piece. For our case, we'll get this done with the range trigger. It keeps an eye on a layer's property and jumps into action once it falls into a particular range, allowing us to trigger the desired interaction. So start by adding a range trigger to your panel and selecting the paging container scroll property. By doing this, if the paging container scroll value falls into a certain range, it triggers interactions. Easy peasy. Next up, we'll delve into the range trigger settings, where you'll recognize the concept of intervals from math class. These are intervals. The available options include greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, between two values, and outside two values. Keep an eye out on the solid dot on the line. This means endpoint values are also included in the specified range. Let's set the range to when we're still on the first page. Enter 0 to 374. On the first page, we play Song 1, and pause Songs 2 and 3. Let's do that by using the playback response. Assign a playback response to Song 1. Then choose Play as default. Let's take a quick preview. As soon as you load the prototype, you'll notice that Song 1 begins to play automatically. This happens because even without interacting with the prototype, the scroll distance falls within the range we've set and hence, it triggers the song to play. Our range trigger is working! Now let's move on to Song 2. Song 2 should start to play when we swipe and switch the song. Again, let's make this happen using a range trigger in our Paging Containers scroll property. This time, set the range to be 375 to 749. When the scroll distance falls into this range, Song 2 should play and simultaneously, Song 1 should be paused and reset. Assign a playback response to Song 2 and choose Play then, assign a reset response to Song 1. Why? A reset response sets a scene, a layer, or a variable back to its initial state. That means if we swipe back to Song 1, it should play from the very beginning. Don't forget to add another reset response to Song 2 under the first range trigger. Song 2 must be paused when we swipe back to Song 1. Let's test it out now. When swiping from Song 1 to Song 2, everything works smoothly. But when swiping back to Song 1, it starts playing before even fully reaching it. This is because we set the first range to be 0 to 374, and the second range to be 375 to 749. So when we swipe back from Song 2 to Song 1, the one pixel difference between 375 and 374 triggers Song 2 to be paused and Song 1 to be played. Let's fix this. Remember we said each optional interval in our range trigger includes the endpoint values? This lets us set the range triggers way stricter. 
In this scenario, we allow song 1 to play only when we fully reach the first page, and so on and so forth. Go ahead and change the first range trigger. We won't touch anything else, just set it to 0 and 0 each. What this does is trigger only the interactions when the scroll value is exactly 0. Similarly, revise the second range trigger to both 375. Let's have a look. Works like a charm. Let's finish up with song 3, our last song in the prototype. Add another range trigger. And set the paging container scroll property to between 750 and 750. Then add a playback response to let song 3 play. Then add a reset response for song 2. Don't forget to add another reset response for song 3 below the second range trigger, so when we scroll back from song 3 to song 2, song 3 pauses. Shall we preview? Voila! With the range all set, it's time to let the description switch together with the tracks playing. In the Layer panel, find a layer group called Description. This includes the text layers for the song title and the artist. Let's make them editable. Go back to our first range. We can now use text responses to change the song titles and artists accordingly. Ready, set, go! One final preview. You've just completed a fully functional music app where you can swipe left or right to switch songs. Great job, and see you in the next one.